Why, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to school. Professor Sprinkles is already in the room waiting for students to arrive. He clears his voice blah, 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 to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on. Does that mean you're going to puke and eat it? But I assure you, it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give him as a snack. You reach into your backpack and grab some homework from last semester that you forgot to turn in. Sprinkles immediately goes for it and gobbles the sheet of paper like it's a piece of fresh chicken rawhide. <laughs> hey, am I? I apologize for that outburst. And I know it seems cliche, but not much in this world Satisfy, satisfies like ungraded work. My delicious dick. Whoa. Were you studying something with cinnamon? Where was I going to school last semester? This is like a three-day school. Uh, I have been sitting in on a lecture series about the art of cake baking. How insightful, Professor! Uh, this actually brings up an important point. Thank you, delicious dick, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom, you see. But before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into class. Sprinkles is interrupted by words and sparks coming from the back of the room. I hope they're not doing it back there. I told you to save it for after class! <laughs> you think I wanted to be thrown from a plane? Or strapped to a stranger? I wanted to be strapped to you and have babies! Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing. Relationships suck. But you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. But no! You had to show off to your cool kid friends like Jeff and Joan, JJ Forever! Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend! Why not a square? Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Oh, do you feel left out, Miriam? So you're being a bitch about it rather than just say how you feel? Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great day! You take Jeff and Joan with you! You can hold hands as you battle down a mountain or off a cliff for all I care! Sad beep. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Chicken's done! Bzz, beep, bzz. No amount of seasoning is gonna make me wanna eat that, Clank! Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker, considering that he himself has wheels, not feet. It's not entirely clear where it came from. Have you been eating other students? In terms of deep fried footwear, I mean, I. I, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see the entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall. Oh, I'm appalled over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown exam trademark. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See y'all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. I hope it's Ashley. Hey, uh, Miriam, are you okay? You're my friend and I care and keep your skirt down. I don't need to see that. Okay, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug. Spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. I want to see the tiny cup. How could he embarrass me like that in class in front of everyone? You're the one who yelled. He was just sitting there. Her tiny cocoa was a delicious treasure. So you know that this breakup is no joke, friend. Even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. No, I'm not going to say that. Why don't you talk about to Clank about what's really bugging you and not be a bitch? Me and you, we're going to cruise through this final test and hit a carpool lane to Success City. Uh, except for if the colonel shows up, then you're going to have to walk. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. 
You're not gonna saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me? I probably am, Miriam. Of course not. Well, yeah, maybe sort of, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it, Don Quixote, and a ranch big enough for the both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. We can get rabbits and we can hug them and pet them and love them. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes tears from her cheeks. I should, I guess, really reveal, reveal my menu for today. I'm going to make a special soup. And I bet the Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice the dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent. Am I going to make coleslaw? Because I... Coleslaw is nice to go with food, cause... but I don't think anyone wants to eat just coleslaw. And a chance to beat all oh, the pants off of, oh, Van Van. I was hoping it was going to be Ashley, the supposed man-man. And his evil counterpart, Ashley. Yeah, I will beat the pants off of Ashley. Beat him off so hard. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of recipe. You've been working on delicious Dick's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, don't y'all want that? Delicious Dick's pot pie, chicken pot pie. Making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by the colonel. Mm, delicious dick. <laughs> what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, I'm just taking it all in, colonel. I'm big into visualizing success. Right now, I imagine I'm with Ashley. Eating... Some mashed potatoes. Then I'll smash her potatoes. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake. The smell is slowly filling the space around you. Hmm. Uh, visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. I was, as I visualized. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who was hungry. But the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires. But that decision gets hard to stick with when the oven timer goes off behind you. Uh, uh, I'm going to fess up about my practice dish. Okay, you got me, Colonel. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. My no, my no nose can smell a pot pie from 200 yards away. Are you like a sn pot pie sniper? That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You, you knew it was a pot pie from the smell? Chicken pot pie, chicken pot pie, I'm gonna die for a chicken pot pie. But not just a chicken pot pie. But one, mm -hmm, with an all butter crust. I like your butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. <laughs> Oh, no. Is it burning? <laughs> no. I can smell. It was made with a helping, helping heap, a heaping help of TLC. The band? Did they do the Chase and Water song, Fall song? But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. Pull out. My pull out game is strong, Colonel. I, oh, I was wrong. The moment of truth. Wow, I cooked it with a spoon. It's the best pot pie I ever did taste. I think the professor's supposed to taste that, Colonel. I've always loved country cooking. And I could eat this all day. You put the cunt in country. What? <laughs> There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. Well, that is, except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you to the edge of victory. Oh, just edge, baby. Edge it to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and the dreamy Ashley are preparing 
by prepping wildly elaborate dishes. Oh, look at that heart. She loves me. Ignore the giant butcher's knife. Per their uh, usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big by going small. I hope her and Clank uh, make up. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices. Oh, I said 7 earlier. I was supposed to say 11. I wasn't paying attention. But he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe. Fry chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10. With a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out cool special cooking moves. Ah! ah cut! Cut! Dice! As they prepare their food. Wow! This is getting serious! Colonel Sanders batters this chicken. Not in public, sir! As it levitates through the air. Hooray, Warsh! That's how I say wash, too. Washing machine. It is this Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, blaster, 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 blaster. I'm not gonna baste you. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let us rock and ride. Getting high, my balls are shrinking. Shrinkity balls. Ashley scoops her pastries. Oh, I thought it was a pasty. He's off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. That's my favorite special uh, personality. Even Clint gets in on it. Five dion pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clint learn to speak English? It's the singularity as was foretold. Father, if you could see me now. Oh, Creepio would be proud. We mustn't let it happen, or the appliance uprising won't take us all! Shut up, Van Van. Self-destruct. Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him up the back door of the arena. Cheetah! As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic? Even if it's certainly evil magic, that seems like the easiest question ever. Chicken! Oh, we're gonna do it the hard way. Oh, Ashley, I could do it to the hard way. Hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I love making. I don't. I hate mac and cheese. The reason I hate mac and cheese is we didn't have a lot of money growing up, and we ate it a lot. So I tell people that they're like, "How could you hate it?" I ate it so much. Uh, no, I'm gonna do it the hard way. Ashley, we could do it the hard way together. Colonel Sanders sees... I, I'm not trying to hit on Ashley, Colonel Sanders. Call me later, Ashley. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. Wink! I believe in you, delicious dick. I'm glad you do. Miriam notices, too. I've always believed in you, delicious dick, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. Never gonna get him, never gonna let you down, never gonna be a clown. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. For you. Uh, Miriam, what about your dish if you're cheering? Who's cooking? Time of food short cook time. I'm already done, bitches. So I thought I'd help you. Oh, Miriam. That's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. <laughs> it's the secret ingredient. However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get I and Newt from? Oh. Oh. The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into the dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. Is there going to be another spork monster? I just didn't want to betray the colonel's confidence. It's I, Steve, the spork monster. Hi, Steve. Steve, wait. What happened to Borco? You're not here to battle me, are you? Oh, we spork monsters are many. I think Borco had the day off. But you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle. Ah, so I'd say you're doing pretty all right. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of some cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy bastard kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? Yeah, Steve, that's cool. I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Maybe he can help. 
Steve the Spork Monster notices that you've got the grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross magic some magical items that accidentally summoned me, huh? Yeah, I guess you, you got it sorted out, Steve. If you were here, would you mind tossing some... Or since you're here, would you mind tossing fresh noodles into a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I always wanted to be a top chef, actually, you know? Oh, I don't need your life story. When I was just a little spork pot, back, back in the old country, you can feel Spork Monster winding up to tell you a very long, involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I need to focus on my competition. I understand. Uh, it's kind of like that time in monster school when I fell asleep during scare tactics class and then I woke up. Oh, God. You toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes a hint. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Please don't. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. We're not going to give up and drop out. We're going to summon extra power deep from without our balls deep down in ourselves. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. I can make mac and cheese. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. I have become the mac and cheese. Eat me. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. Mom's spaghetti. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for. Yes, delicious dick. You are the chosen one. You will avenge me. What is your name so I can summon your dumb ass? The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue, dumb ghost. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the wood my cock or my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power, you can do anything. I can be anything. Except turn back time. Turn back time. My song is beautiful. Seems like bad song. Sorry, Steve. Which would be super useful because while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. I already took it out, though. The colonel has some. Did I put it back in? But don't worry, dear delicious dick. You have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude. Make a saving throw. Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. <laughs> you know what? I've been watching you today. I've been watching real good. And I must say, I am truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet. And rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese. The time is almost up. You're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? The rules! Following the rules has never... Oh. Following the rules has never been my thing. I follow my heart. That's why I don't have a driver's license. And I don't pay for insurance. What? That's dangerous. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you ever laid your eyes on. Give me them tendies. And besides... Sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are we going to mix this into the bowl with the mashed potatoes and the everything? Are you suggesting? If we combine forces, we can perform the more perfect food union. Time's up, students! The time expired. It's the moment everyone has been waiting for. Er, you must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but class seems incomplete for some reason. Er, it seems we're missing some students, Pop, Clank. From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. Ha, <laughs> I'm flying! Sounds like it's coming from the broom closet over there. Er, Miriam, would you mind? The side of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook. By the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now! I doubt that is Pop's fault. Van Van probably put them up there. Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? Ah, when someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? But Pop is not so smart, but he seems nice. Oh, I thought a wedgie was a salad! Yeah, it looks like Pop Pop is eliminated from the challenge. 
See, now we didn't cook anything. What? No, sprinkles. Come on. It's like a Disney movie or something. Don't be an asshole. It wasn't his fault he was sabotaged. Yeah, I can't feel my legs. Maybe excused? Sure. Wait, your voices are getting to sound similar. Are you related? You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in uh, school history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second, pranks, pranks, clank. Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature word, beep, or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Uh, somehow, he must have gotten unplugged. Or I guess we'll have to figure that out later. That only leaves four remaining students. Please, collect your final projects. Yes, it's been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. That time has flown. But after days of hard work, the time comes for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I made tender udon noodles in a savory soup. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny Naruto Maki? I spy a float in a tizzy bitsy bowl. Yes, you have it in. Oh, please call me Sprinkles. My chef is my father's name. That's pretty good. Has there been a chicken on the pedestal the whole time and I didn't notice it? Ah. Yeah. Why well, you don't notice my chicken? Yes, yeah, Sprinkles. And some green tea made from baby tea. Made from real babies. That I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip whoa, of his pink dog tongues dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus, rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed and she gives you a big hug. Thank you, delicious dick, for helping me to believe in myself. Oh, you're a good cook. You deserve it. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish, bitch. I made uni over a smooth egg custard in an axe hewn urchin cell. Shall top with caviar. Do not eat that. He makes poison food. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second different colored type of urchin? Yeah, sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand, you know, that's what I got going on. Don't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically. Causing the custard to slosh around. Oh, woof, woof! Please be gentle with my cuisine! You like it rough, you know you do, Van Van. <laughs> Finally, Sprinkles goes all in tongue first. But he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Yeah, my tongue! My tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat a slug without to poke him! The plung! Disqualified! You're disqualified, Van. You poisoned the professor. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Yet dipshit. Dejected Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified for glamour! You don't discount simplicity! Ah, uh, this isn't the last you've heard of me. You will hear much more of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it! Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Seems like you're agitated. Next student, Ashley! Time to step up! Now describe your dish! I made... Orange blossom, Turkish delight, and a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. 
I don't know if you've ever read the Chronicles of Narnia. In the line, The Witch in the Wardrobe, I think it is Edward. Isn't Edward loves Turkish delight? And the way it's written in the book, I'm like, oh, he loves it. It must be delicious. And then many years later, I had some and it's god awful. <laughs> like, oh, no thank you. That actually don't sound so bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school. What point of food is that, Ashley? Got toast in your ears to something delicious, Dick? I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it. And did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating. School for the hungry and poor. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted. But don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. Sorry, Ashley. You're disqualified! Rage overtakes Ashley. She cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You would know high, you wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. With that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me either. Well, if this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cook, step up together. Two chefs. What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese? Yes. Wrong voice. It's, uh, it's become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing an eye in the bowl. We just shoved everything together. Uh oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Uh, just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this thing? It completely blew me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I have never tasted anything delicious. This delicious or so perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. That is a horrible way to do things. I guess they made a dog a professor, so. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win! Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive that even Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragrance. Fragrance? Fragrance? Do you love me now, Ashley? I can feed food to your giant fat face. I mean, it's beautiful. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declare that you have passed. Everyone have passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on. How could they be better than this one? Now the school year is complete and everyone has graduated. The students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. I almost don't recognize the cafeteria. It looks so different since it's been redecorated to serve as the site of our dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. Oh yeah, DJ Dog in the house! Oh! You knew that Sprinkles was the master chef, but also world-renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Oh, Ashley. Van Van and Ashley... Tell everyone that they're committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they're villains. See, they've changed their ways. For a moment, you actually believe them. Oh, I'm an idiot. Not another haunting. No, go slow at graduation. Clearly written in the school's bylaws. Can't we just help him out? I was never actually a ghost. It was a trick to get you to finally notice me. So you broke into Colonel Sanders' house? And then how did you go out the window with the breeze? Oh, it's amusing. Well, the professor don't care. And now that everyone's together, it's the Spork Monster. He's totally mellowed out. Yo, everybody, Spork Monster's no more. From here out, I prefer everyone to call me by my new name, Party Monster. Student tries to finish what he was saying, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Sorry, Party Monster. 
Dejected, the student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking. And you know, she's gonna do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could ma command such an entrance? It's Pop. What? He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see that atop his dirty chef's hat is... A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we mailed it directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. Man, we got a whole new wing on the school. Not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. So you're seeing his dad just bought him success. The music of the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank. Oh, he looks nice. He's arrived late to the dance, though. Now that I've graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I'm actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? Nani? I actually feel like I knew this the whole time. I was going to do an aliens. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return to my people. Miriam, will you come with me? Yeah, I like doing that. I don't know what else to say, though. Besides, no, eat a dick. I just began to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty, pretty clear she's managed to surpass you in that regard. What are you saying, game? I'm mature. Very mature. I understand. Humans are weird. Yes, we are, Clank. A portal opens up. Clank is like, my work here is done. And he disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time it's a full meal! He stole my recipe! I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in history. A chicken and man. Or chicken man. Or a man, a race of chicken man. By not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. Mashed potatoes and gravy and biscuits. The end? Or... No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Colonel Sanders? Yes, delicious dick. I, I couldn't help but wonder. Was our final exam team up purely an act of strategy carried by two cunning chefs? Or was it something more? Hmm. I'm afraid I can't answer that directly. Look at him sweating. He's got the feels. And instead, I'd like to ask you a question of my own. May I have this do si -do? <laughs> Colonel Sanders extends his hand to you. You feel a surge of energy jump off the tips of his fingers. His hand, the hand of a master chef. So dedicated to the craft of fine cookery. So tender yet refined. So milky smooth. Fingers like finely battered drumsticks, turned in flour, soaked in buttermilk, and dusted with exotic spices. But they do not reach for tongs, a knife, or even a spork. Tonight, they reach for me! Hmm. And I thought our feet may tire of dancing. I believe that this is the beginning of our steps together. Oh, Colonel Sanders! Colonel Sanders, I... We... You not only join me on the dance floor, but in the kitchen is my co-chef and partner, both in business and in life. You gasp. Could it be? Is he really sane? Me and you together? Cross swords? Ever since I met you, my dream has changed. We've changed him. It's not enough to simply open the world's greatest fried chicken stand in a restaurant, you know. Not even. My life would be incomplete without you by my side. And I will always love you. Oh, God. So what do you say, partner? 
Ah, see? I love you, Colonel Sanders! Now eat my dick! My delicious dick! Well, everybody, that was I Love You, Colonel Sanders. Uh, they're gonna have a finger looking good time, I guess. Oh, my. That game was a lot of fun. I played a lot of Let's Plays in my time, and the people who wrote this did a very good job of staying true to the medium, true to the genre. And it's awesome that KFC gave them enough leeway to have some fun with it all. I like Rudy, too. Well, everybody, we found true love with the Colonel. I'll see you all in whatever I stream next time. Or, uh, record. This is the Twitch. Take it easy.